High school requires you to be a great deal more independent than you were in junior high or middle school. There are three main areas you'll need to develop in order to be successful. Organizing yourself, organizing your stuff, and organizing your time. There are also some skills you'll need to develop. Hi, I'm Katherine O'Brien, and I've had the privilege of helping teens get ready for college since 2004. With a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering and a master's in theology, I'm adept at writing, math, and science. Helping students develop as well as determine what they'd like to study, explore possible schools, prepare applications, and win scholarships are such joys. Oh, before we move on, I should mention that I've written three books, as you can see. The Ultimate Guide to Top Quality College Planning was written for parents to help them, if they're considering working with a college consultant, to have some idea of the backgrounds and the variety of, of services uh, price points, etc., that college consultants offer. And then the uh, two editions of Every Catholic's Guide to College are college guides I created to help Catholic families find Catholic community on campus. Now, there's lots of uh, public universities with Catholic dorms and all sorts of other things, which are wonderful resources, but hard to know where to find. All three books are available on Amazon.com. Now, I'm sure you will not be surprised to learn that the number one factor college admissions teams consider is academics. They look at whether or not you took challenging classes. They want to know if you earned ex excellent grades and what the trend was among your grades from freshman year on. And they want you to get great test scores. Additionally, some schools have specific course requirements. Now, in order to excel academically, and especially if you have high hopes, you want to get into more selective colleges, you need to be at the starting gate with your full suite of high school level study skills. First, let's take a quick look at the top 15 tips. Sit up front so you can see, hear, and won't be distracted. Read the book. We'll talk more about this shortly. Take good notes. Building upon what you read, your notes will be your key to success. We'll talk about those too. Sleep. If you're not awake and alert, you can't learn very well. Set a schedule. This is mission critical. Set up a strong routine and it will support your success. Don't and your performance will be uneven. Manage your time. You have two choices. You can let life drag you along, or you can set goals, determine what you'll do and when you'll do it, and make the most out of your life. Dedication. This is the determination to be in charge, to accomplish your goals. 100% effort. Don't do anything in a half-baked way. Do the best you can at all times. Office hours. Now, this is the way a college student would put it. But this means that you advocate for yourself. You meet for teachers and ask for help when you need it. If you don't understand, you ask. If you'd like a paper looked over ahead of time, you ask. If you're not getting the answers right in your math or science homework, you ask for help and you work at it until you do and you understand why you were mistaken and why it's right now. Eat. Eat well, regularly, in a healthy way. Balance is key, have some fun. Work hard, play hard, relax, have family time, friend time, study time, church time, etc. Review nightly. Discipline yourself to read over each day's note uh, every night before you start on the assignments. This will, this is a game changer. This will absolutely revolutionize your ability to remember, understand and organize your thoughts around the topics in your classes. Study in groups. Sometimes that's wonderful. Sometimes it's not. The opportunities can be there and use that time well and efficiently. Always give yourself an end time if you're going to study in a group. But it can motivate you to get things done in order to be a good part of the group. Study in chunks. Take breaks. 
Studies show that your brain works best when you take a break every hour. Get up, walk around, do something else. Lecture prep. We'll talk more about this shortly. Basically, it means to pre-read the material and show up to class ready. So let's unpack all of this a bit. Sleep. Before all else, you need to sleep. Without energy, you can't do anything else. You need to have a regular schedule. Make sure you sleep enough hours. You'll get more restful sleep if you're off all screens at least an hour before you go to bed. When you have the need, get up early. Staying up late will yield less in terms of your study efforts and will mess up your energy level more than getting up early, so it's really not worth it. Goals. In order to manage your time or be de dedicated, you're going to need some goals. You need to know what's important and what's important to you. These will motivate you and they can also serve as measuring sticks to help you check your progress. They will also help you say no to other things that are not part of your goals. Studyhack.com suggests a few. Use a method for taking notes. Restate the concepts in your own words. Don't just try to write down what you're hearing verbatim word for word. They also suggest you always read ahead, have a schedule, and study when you're most awake. Tidy your room, do the dishes, laundry, etc. when you're tired. That stuff doesn't require a lot of energy, but it makes a difference, and we do need to contribute to our household, so we got to do that stuff. But, you know, if i got a ton of energy, I want to be studying at that time and be focused. And you want to keep yourself healthy, good hygiene, good diet, good sleep, and your relationships healthy. Lots and lots of drama takes a lot of energy, a lot of time away from your academics. And, you know, all those dramatic relationships aren't going to help you on your college applications. Now, you need to organize your stuff, too. This is Fitzpatrick. Patrick picture of a pantry is inviting. I could see what's there. I feel confident approaching it to get something out, even though it's not my pantry. To organize your things, you're going to need some way to track your assignments, whether it's a little notebook, you're using your phone, whatever. You need to be able to track assignments so you know what's due, what's done, what's next. You need to be able to keep track of the papers given to you and to carry your assignments that you need to turn in. Now you need to be aware, sometimes we have all paper, Sometimes we have all through the computer. Sometimes we have a blend. So you need to have systems in place for each scenario. And you need a way to keep track of your logins. There are a number of software programs that schools are using to post notes to students and assignment requirements and templates and all that kind of stuff. If you can't find your login, you're stuck. So you want to have that in a couple different places so that you can get in, check your grades, get that information from teachers, turn in things. So whatever software you need to log into, you've got that. And don't just depend on it being memorized by your computer. Okay. A lot of us will do that, but then we're off the library or using a friend's computer and then we're stuck because we can't get in. Right. So you want to have a place where the, the login information is available, even if you can't use the cookies on your own browser. Okay, and that goes for electronic textbooks and other online resources as well. Remember that you need to know, and at the beginning of the year, it's not a bad idea to have a paper list or a, on your computer list of this teacher wants things turned in this way, and this one wants them turned in that way, and this one, you know, the deadline of Tuesday means by noon, or that one means by midnight, or whatever it is for each teacher. They're all a little bit different, and it's not going to get any better. Bosses are different too, so be ready to know who wants what how. And so write that down in the beginning, and just have that handy so that you can refer to it and go have your excellent work acknowledged as excellent as opposed to ah, sorry i didn't get it so you got a zero but i did a great job on it yeah okay but you didn't turn it in the way i asked you to huh. that would be awful right and it happens what name do you need to put things on how do you need to name files what information do you want on a piece of paper at the head of you know 
we used to have teachers write on the board what they wanted and some wanted our name first and some wanted the class period first and some wanted the name of the class and it was in the date and da 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 they were all different so we had to keep track because sometimes if we put our name on the first line then the teacher would mark it wrong because they wanted it on the second line because some people are persnickety okay so just know what it is how do you need to name the files that you submit what format do they want them in and then you need to create a plan and get the things you need to organize your stuff whatever that is i have a wonderful desk with a lot of cubby holes and i have all kinds of information there and i have things taped in different places and that's how i organize my things what do you need for yours i've seen kids take shoe boxes and make file drawers out of them i've seen kids have phenomenal software programs that they have all kinds of categorizations and file folders with documents inside and subfiles, and sometimes they can see the whole skeleton architecture of how they have things stored and they can find things easily. And I've seen kids spend half an hour because they can't find the essay that we were working on because they have no clue. So as long as it's tidy and easy to use, you're good. Okay, there's no right way or wrong way. Now you got to organize your time too. So you're going to need some kind of calendar or planner. Many students find this particular task to be really challenging. You need to keep experimenting until you find or create a system that works for you. You may need several, like some of us like to use things on our phone, but then we have teachers or schools that don't let us use our phone while we're there. So you can't do that. Um, or you wanna take pictures, but you take so many other pictures that you constantly are running out of space on your phone and you, so taking pictures of the assignments written down doesn't work either or you're constantly losing your papers whatever it is okay um, but keep experimenting until you create a system that works for you google calendar is great for keeping track of appointments for example and extracurricular activities and can be helpful because your parents can see the schedule and so they know that you know this day we've got track and it's done at four and that day we've got this practice and it's done at six and you know they're picking you up at the right times that kind of thing but they're not the greatest at tracking assignments. There's other software that's good for that. So um, I wanna say though, while there are many apps out there, when successful business owners and students speak with me, every single one of them uses some sort of piece of paper to organize their time each day. They have fixed appointments written down somehow and they're prioritized tasks and most of them will assign times so they know i've got this meeting and that meeting and the other event and this task is going to happen here and that task is going to happen in this other window and these little things are going to get sprinkled in here and it'll all be done by this point and they've got it prioritized so that that first task or that task is going to keep rolling into their open spaces until it gets done because it needs to get done whatever it is so i'm just letting you know so for a high school student that may look like when i get home i take my break and i sit down and say okay i've got this amount of time dinner's going to be this time bedtime whatever else i need to do and then flow in okay i've got these assignments of these things to get done so i'm going to do math now and then i'm going to do english and then i'm going to do this and do that and then i'm going to walk the dog and do whatever it is okay um and you just have a little map and then you know when i'm done with all that stuff i'm done so okay so there are a number of study skills that you'll need to improve in order to be successful during high schools. High school, sorry. Taking notes effectively is really, really, really important. So some schools teach the Cornell method. Some do in middle school, some do it in high school. Some never ever mention it. Some people really like it and find it helpful. I suggest you learn it and then you tweak it as you like. So from the right of the pink line on a sheet of notebook paper, and by the way, writing down your notes, pen and pencil on paper is far more effective than typing them as far as learning the material goes. Okay, they've done the neurological studies and it makes sense, right? When we are pushing a pen or a pencil, we're having to think about the formation of the letters, the organization of the words on the page, or the we're gonna draw some things in squares and blocks and different colors, however we're gonna organize the page. When we're typing, it's the same motion, right? Fingers getting pushed down, doesn't matter what letter. And you don't have as much freedom to organize your page, or if you do, it takes longer. So it just, 
they have found it stimulates the brain far more. You're reprocessing the material. And the more you do that in your brain, the better you learn it. So writing with pen on paper is, vet is much more effective. Okay, so back to that piece of notebook paper, to the right of the pink line, take your notes. Note the main ideas and the key concepts. Try to rephrase what's said in your own words. Don't just try to write down Abe Lincoln was shot because that's the word order the teacher said. You know, Lincoln assassinated, put that instead, something. So you're rethinking it and writing it in your own words. You want to skip a line between ideas and more lines between topics. It's okay if there's extra blank paper. As you're experimenting and getting to know different teacher styles and speeds, you'll figure out how you need to do for each teacher. It's in order to efficiently take your notes. Do not use sentences when you are taking notes. This is the place for bullet points. Okay, just the facts. Boom, 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 boom. Not sentences and transitions and beautiful and punctuation and not even spelling, okay? At the bottom of each page, you wanna leave the last four or five lines blank. So I would suggest before the day even starts, you kind of mark where that is so that you could draw a line all the way across the page or just across a little part of it. So you stop and you roll into the next page. Something I always do at the top of my pages is I date them. And if I'm going to have multiple pages, I'll date them. So I've got month date and dash a number. So I know what page number I'm on. And I don't care if it's fronts or backs. Sometimes I'll just number all the fronts. Sometimes I'll number everything. It just depends on what's going on. But that way I know when the note is, what class it's for and what page it is without taking a lot of time. Okay. And then that left margin, you wanna to use to flag different topics so you can find them. Oh yeah, where was that? Where they talked about you know, the Declaration of Independence and this or that. And that way it's kinda, of, you know, it's your flags. Here's this, here's that, here's the other thing. And I could zip through as I'm looking because, oh yeah, I'm trying to remember, you know, the Edict of Milan and I just don't remember who all said that or whatever and I gotta find it. You know, and so I know it was history class and I know it was in February. Okay. And that way I'm not reading all of my notes. I'm just flipping through those little recall items I wrote on the left, the little flags. <clears throat> at the end of the day, when you're reviewing your notes at night, remember I told you when you get home to review your notes, that's where you use that summary section and you fill in the recall column. You know, the left, you're going to note, oh, yeah, this is the main thing here, main thing here, main thing here. Oh, yeah, this person here, blah, blah, blah. And at the bottom is your little summary of what's going on. We're talking about photosynthesis and this and then the other thing, da, 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 whatever it is, okay? All right. Moving to something I mentioned earlier also, reading your textbook. You want to do that ahead of time wherever possible. When you read a textbook, you start by reading the headers and the blurbs under the pictures. The first time you read through, that's all you read. All the little titles and the blurbs under the pictures and look at the pictures and diagrams. That gives you a framework or a skeleton for the material being presented. Remember, our brain associates information with other information. And so maybe you're learning something completely new that you don't know anything about. By doing this, you're creating a framework for your mind to then remember the rest of the material. You also want to take the time to read questions at the end of the chapter, because these highlight the most important parts of the chapter. So a lot of times in the high school textbooks, there's a practice test or there's just study questions, sometimes by section, sometimes at the end of the chapter. Those are, giant pointers to this is important or that relationship is important or that concept is important or the development of that philosophy or that political situation is important. So that helps you know what to look for. So you read all of those things and then you read the chapter. You've already got the framework and you're already knowing, oh yeah, Aaron Byrne, really important. Aaron Burr, important guy, important guy. What's he do? And when he comes up, you're like, aha, Got to pay attention to him. He was mentioned 16 times over there. Lots of questions about this guy. And as you read, you know, so it just plugs in. 
all the data plugs in, okay? Now, for books you have to read for English, like novels, I strongly encourage you to take notes on paper. There's all these things about putting post-it notes in your books and highlighting books. And I, I've done all of these things, and I honestly tell you, what I did in high school is better than any of the stuff I learned later. So I would read whatever the book was, and I would take notes in notebook paper. To the left of the pink line, I would write page numbers. To the right, I would write main events, introduction new characters, really cool quotes, uh, plot, like plot thickening or subplot or uh, a big crisis, whatever. So the main things. So I would take a 300 page book and turn it into five to 10 pages of notes. And I could read my notes and I would know the main elements of the story and what pages they were on. I found that invaluable for knowing what's happening in the story, but also then writing papers later because we need to talk about the crisis, the culmination, the big stress, you know, is she going to take lover A or lover B or whatever's going on? And I know that that's on page 275 to 282 because it's in my notes and it took me three minutes to find it instead of flipping back and forth in that stupid book forever and it's finally throwing it at the wall. Not so good, right? So one is very helpful, the other is not. And you can use different color ink. You can, you know, highlight. Sometimes kids are pulling vocabulary out because they don't know what they mean and you could just pull that. So there's different ways that you can set that up where you want to put all the characters, you know, the protagonist in one color and the antagonist in another color if there's a lot of conflict or whatever. You can use those and then you could pull. It's really easy to say, I'm going to do a character essay of the development of, you know, whoever. And I can just see right there. I just pull this one, that one, that one, that one, as I go through and I'm skipping all the rest because I've already color coded it. Okay. Now, before we go over any more study tips, we want to set the stage for success. So let's talk about your study environment. And I know what I, as a parent and a teacher and an educator and a lifelong student, have found to be useful. But I took the time to go see what current high school and college kids are saying. And they said the same thing. You need to have a good study environment. No noise. We know for a fact that the human brain does only one thing at a time. The only exception I've seen to this is sometimes a style of music without words, jazz or classical or certain kinds of things like that can help you remember. But if there's words in the music, absolutely not. No, no uh, phone. You need to have phone free times. And it's okay to let your friends know, you know, between 6 and 9 p.m. every day, I'm off my phone. Uh, you know, between 9 and 9.30, I'll check and then I'm off my phone because I'm going to bed, whatever it is, okay? And, you know, people may look at you funny, but then they'll get used to it. And I bet you, you have other people doing the same thing because they start seeing your grades. No TV. We do not study in front of the TV or with a TV in the background. We just don't. You need media-free zones or times to help you build and retain your attention span and protect your study time. We all know when you see a young lady with a towel and flip-flops and her swimsuit, she belongs at the pool or she's heading to the pool, right? She's not going to the theater. She's not going to go meet with the principal. She's not going to the grocery store. That's what she's doing. She's got everything set for that stage. The same thing needs to happen with us with our study skills. So whatever that is, if we've got a certain light or we we'll close the door or we have a note on the door or we've gone off to the library, this is our zone, our time, our place that's set up for success. Um, find your style. Some of us need to go to the library. I found I work from home. I work alone a lot. And there are times where I need to go where other people are studying because it just gets too hard to do it all by myself. Other times where I need to be where there is nobody else because everybody is just distracting me right now. Um, some of us use visual aids. We use pictures and things and colors and stuff. And some of us really don't. Um, some of us listen to things and we remember that. Like I know a fair amount of scripture, it's in songs. That's how I remember it. Um, one more thing. 
Physical exercise daily improves our ability to think. So make sure you get moving, whether that's walking or biking back and forth to school, mowing the lawn, doing sports, working out, find a way to put 30 minutes of movement into your day. So now that you have set up the right environment for studying, let's talk about how to prepare for various kinds of tests. The top tips for academic success. Overall, review your notes every single day and do not procrastinate on assignments. We know for sure that students who wait to the study at the last minute or do assignments at the last minute score worse than their more prepared peers. So don't do it. You want to do well, <laughs> get organized, get her done. Preparing for tests is a hugely important study skill. So for math and science tests, you need to know the vocabulary, you need to know the formulae, and we need to know how to work the various problems covered in class. So by reading the chapter before the lecture, you'll be able to identify the new vocabulary and concepts, as well as prepare questions, because maybe you kind of get photosynthesis, but this one part is just got you stumped. Listen when the teacher teaches it and you've got your questions ready because you know that this aspect is really befuddling you. And if you don't understand it, I bet other kids don't either. But what appreciation it will, it will improve the entire class to have one of you reading ahead of time and ready with questions and ready even with comments or just understanding the material. For math and science tests, it is a good idea to create your own test problem set by writing out how to solve each type of problem in the chapter. And you wanna do this incrementally every day as you're moving forward. And you wanna write down every single step, don't skip any, and practice those kinds of problems that give you difficulty because logically you're getting stuck or mathematically you're getting stuck, whatever it is that's giving you trouble. Um, really work it through. And then you can also go with better questions to the teacher as opposed to, I'm just hating this whole chapter, stoichiometry and chemistry or whatever it is. You say, you know what, this balancing equations that look like this, I'm just baffled. When do I use this and when do I use that? Oh, okay, it's a much better question and it gets to the meat of what I'm confused about. For tests in your other classes, having a solid outline of the material will help you identify items emphasized by your teacher. Remember, if you've pre-read and you've got kind of notes already, and then the teacher starts talking about something else, especially in college, you'll find this. Oh, they're adding to the material in the text. This is important to them, important enough to add. And I'll, I'll tell you, they are going to put some question on that to see if you're paying attention in class, especially in college, because you don't always have to attend. So create your study notes by hand, like the student created. These are the student study tips and they did them by hand. They color coded them, they're neat. Different things jump out. Use some color, find ways to link the material that you're having trouble to remember. You know, you could do alliterations, things that all start with the same letter or have some kind of correlation. I would often do pairs especially alphabetical and you know, things that were kind of closer to each other than other and I could pair things up to remember which one went with what, those kinds of things. When you're studying a foreign language, read out loud. Don't worry about your speed, focus on your pronunciation and your accuracy. You need to study your vocab. You can use flashcards. Paper is best, but there are some really good programs on the computer that function like flashcards and you need to go back both ways your language to the target language target language back to your language and make sure you can spell because say the word pan in french means bread if you misspell the word in english you'll probably get credit but if you misspell the word in french in a french class you're not going to get credit so you need to be able to say it you need to bring it out of your memory Oh yeah, what's the word for bread? And you need to be able to spell it correctly. You wanna apply new grammar rules in practice sentences more than once and repeat them. Repetition is the most important thing in a foreign language every, every, every day. And then 
timelines for history. However you want to do them, horizontally, vertically, on the wall, paper, whatever. You want to tie in new information with things you already know or with easy to remember dates. And some people will get really hooked in this and then they start making correlations. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't that when genetics was getting founded by Gregor Mendel and then this other stuff was going on over there and all at the same time. And you start recognizing the impacts, different facets of knowledge have on each other. And you start seeing political uprisings because there was a famine or whatever. And this is different things were going on. And you're like, oh, I get it. Or, um, you know, we read about chill blains and all kinds of things and consumption and things people died from. And we have no idea what in the world any of that stuff is. And why don't we have those anymore? And then we recognize the difference in lifespan that correlates with air conditioning, central heating, having houses that sail from the outdoors. Huge improvement in human lifespan. So that's putting your science with your history and all of a sudden all these other things can develop because people aren't dying when they're 30 anymore. So anyway, okay. Stress relief on test day. There are a number of stress busters. It's good to have them even if you don't tend to have any stress because it's better to be prepared than not. If you're starting to stress out during a test, close your eyes, put down your pen or pencil. You can't function anyway, so you may as well do this you're, yes, you're losing time, but so what? You've got to be able to get your mind working again. So put down your pen or pencil, close your eyes. You're no longer there. Take three deep breaths. While you're breathing, just think about breathing. Breathe in, feel it. Breathe out, let it out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. You've lowered your respiration rate. You've calmed yourself. Your heart rate's going down. Open your eyes. Go forward one question at a time. If you need to cover up the rest of the test, you can only see one question. Do that. Just go one question. Just answer the one question. If you have no idea how to answer the one question, just go to the next question and move on. Just slow and steady. As you get your rhythm, you'll be able to speed up a little bit because if you go super, super slow, obviously you're not going to finish on time. But you may need to go super, super slow for the first one or two as you just get yourself pulled together and out of that stress place and out of that panic attack or whatever just happened and able to function, okay? So a quick summary. To study well, set yourself up for success with a solid sleep routine, daily exercise, determination, clear goals, a good environment, no phones, and never pens for color coding your notes. Be around the right environment. You don't want to be off trying to, you know, work with a zillion things going on. Okay? So all of that should get you started. For additional help on your journey to college, please schedule a meeting with me. I'd be happy to help you find the best majors and schools for you at the lowest possible costs. Go to CelticCollegeConsultants.FullSlate.com to schedule a meeting. My website, CelticCollegeConsultants.com, has lots of information on the FAQ pages, as well as information about the services I offer. All the best to you. And I recommend watch this video more than once. There's a, just a lot of note taking and study skills and tips in here. And, and I had to cram it in <laughs> to a half an hour. So you'll want to take your time with it. All right. All the best to you. Look forward to meeting with you. Bye-bye.